Hi, welcome to chapter six, trading income basis assessment. It's almost like continuing really from the last chapter because chapter four introduced the concept of current year basis whereby the adjusted trading profit in the accounting period is assessed in the tax year in which the accounting period ends. So like we had December year end accounts, net profit before tax, add back adjustments, then deduct capital allowances, those sort of things, end up with your adjusted trading profit. December 2011, that's in 11-12, that's the year in which it's assessed. There are some other rules, that, however, that you must look at. Opening years, what happens when a business starts to form? So what you need to do is the profits assessed in year one are the actual basis. So what you would do is, say your business starts on the 1st of June, 2011 you would then calculate the actual profits to 5th of 4th 2012 that will be your first period this is the adjusted profits from the commencement of business to the following 5th of April year 2 if there is a 12 month period of account ending in the second tax year then use the current year basis so if in this example Mr. Joe Bloggs produces accounts from 1st of June 2011 to the 31st of May 2012. That ends in 12-13. Therefore, you can use a 12-month period of account. It ends in the second year. Yep, yeah, tick. Now, that will be your assessment. So that will be 11-12. That will be 12-13. But notice... This period here is mostly included within this period. So you're going to tax the same, quite a lot of it, all the, all in the same um, year, twice. It's going to get taxed twice. Now, I contact that rule. This is the period of accounts, period assessed. Okay, so we've just talked about first 12 months of trading, period of account is more than 12 months after commencement, you still only assess the first 12 months ending on the accounting date, there is no period of account ending in the second tax year, then it's the actual profits between 6th of April and the 5th of April that you assess. Year three, if you finally have to take round, what you're trying to get to is to get to the first 12 months accounting period that ends in the current tax year. That's where you're trying to move to over the from first to second to third year. As I've set up here, there is a possibility, well, this, this has been assessed. In this period here to the end of May, you've got from the 1st of June to the to the 5th of April okay that is the same as that period it's going to be taxed twice in the first two years this is called overlap relate profits profits from certain periods will be assessed in more than one year these overlap profits you basically take a memo how much you've ass ass assessed and you, what you do is you deduct that amount, that profit, from the assessment in the final year when the business ceases. So it could be many, many, many years in the future. You just need to keep it on file to remember to remove it from the closing year rules to not um, tax it then. So it can be quite a long time to wait. Change of accounting dates. Well where you change the accounting date there are special rules and you just need to work out how to get back to a current year basis to assess them closing year rules not so often examined but when a business ceases there will be no periods which have not been taxed that's the broad idea so you're basically trying to catch everything up because you will miss some uh, periods but you've also got the brought forward from the overlap profits if there were any to remove so identify the tax year in which the business ceases that's the first thing to do for the penultimate tax year identify the current year basis 
assessment, right, what ends, what year you're going to be in. Calculate the profits for the period from the date last assessed in two above until the date of cessation and from this figure delete any overlap profits. That is what you then tax. Now, those rules are for opening, closing, current year basis. What happens if you make a loss? Another big complicated set of rules, but let's work our way through it. When an individual has a tax adjusted trading amount, which is negative, i.e. loss of 10,000 pounds, you don't put 10,000 pounds, you basically, your trading profit is nil. The trading loss can be offset against certain other income in accordance with the rules discussed in this chapter. So the main rule is you can carry it forward against future trading profits. So the trading loss from selling widgets must go against future trading profits of selling widgets. If that's what you sell, widgets, then it's one loss against future, you can't offset against a different type of profit in the future. Offset the loss against total income. Remember the total income is more than just your trading profits, there's other stuff in there as well. And you can do it in the year or the preceding year. If a claim against total income has been made, there is an optional claim against chargeable gains in the tax year of the loss and or the preceding tax year. So you can actually offset it against capital gains, which is quite useful. Okay. Now, carrying forward a trading loss, as I've sort of said, it must be the same trade it can't be different if you change your business and create a loss and then after that the business is something different you can't carry forward and utilize it when you set the loss you can you uh, the amount of loss to be set off is as much as possible the loss can be offset against total income in the year of the loss and or preceding year as we said so an example would be a 2011 counting period. It arises in 11-12, which means the loss could be offset against your total income in either 11-12 current year or prior year, 10-11. You can choose and it's subject to a claim by the individual. So you must claim it. If you don't, you'll lose it. The loss relief is against total income. Now remember total income is before offsetting of personal allowances which was 7475 and therefore you won't run the risk of not use utilizing your personal allowance it'll be wasted you can't carry forward personal allowances so when doing loss relief planning you must lay out in a certain way your numbers and then decide which is the best way and obviously the best way is to offset against the highest rate of tax um, that's where you put the loss if a loss remains after a claim against total income, it can be offset against chargeable gain, as I've said. So a loss in 11-12 can go against current year or prior year. Offset of opening year loss against total income. A trading loss incurred in the first four tax years of operation can be offset against total income from the three years preceding the tax year of the loss. So, crikey, the you can actually go against your total income, your salaries and emoluments and all the rest of it, which you uh, had before you set up in business. And the loss is set on a first in, first out basis, i.e. against the earliest tax years first. Okay, so there's another way of offsetting your loss. Terminal losses against previous trading profits, well, any unrelieved trading loss of the last 12 months can be relieved against trading profits in the year of cessation and carry back an offset against trading profits for the three preceding years on a LIFO, so last in, first out basis. Okay. Okay, it's quite a lot to learn there. It might be worth just working your way back to, um, to see what's gone on. 
and then we'll go into chapter 8 in the next recording.